Not like me, T-1000 Advanced Prototype made of Mimitech Poly Alloy. Here's your look guys at the NECA Toys Terminator 2 White Hot T-1000. With interchangeable arms, the White Hot T-1000 figure changes color when exposed to extreme hot or cold temperatures. Place them in the freezer or run under hot or cold water to watch it happen. As the T-1000 mimics the color of my backdrop, hopefully you guys can still see it, let's figure out how tall, measure how tall the T-1000 stands, stopping the Ultra Measuretron 5000 right there. The Ultra Measuretron 5000, having a look at the T-1000, tells us that the figure stands 6.8 inches in height, which in centimeters works out to be 17.3 centimeters tall. Bringing in a couple of the other figures that we had a look at, here's the Metal Mash Endoskeleton, or Metal Mash Terminator. And then also the first figure that we had a look at right there, there's the Power Arm T-800. Yes, the T-1000, a lot of T's being thrown out there, is a little bit smaller in stature. He also has the color change option too, which we will look at a little bit further in this review. Just before we do that, however, let's have a look at the accessories that come included with the figure. A very small pistol can be wielded in his hand, or if you'd like to display it elsewhere, much like the original released T-1000 figure, uh, you can take the pistol and fit it into a side holster. It does stand out because of the pistol being black in nature and then the rest of the figure really being this light blue color. It does, like I said, stand out. Even like the walkie-talkie is this kind of translucent blue plastic. But it's a place that you can put the pistol if you don't want to have it displayed in his hand. Or if you want to have it displayed in his hand, one thing that the figure also comes included with, which I've already taken the time and liberty to change out, is an interchangeable hand. This is the hand that it, this is the hand it comes out of the packaging with. Kind of exciting, isn't it? Okay, it's not. But I did swap it out though with the gripping hand that fits almost around the trigger area of the pistol. And then you can have the T1000 wielding that as well. Like I said, it does stand out a little bit. I guess this is the best route they could have gone because they don't want to make everything that's translucent plastic. The pistol ultimately would just kind of get lost amongst the mix of like the coloring of the rest of the figure. So this is the option that they ended up going with. We take the pistol out of his hand. I suppose we will leave the hand here in place for the time being. And the other accessory that the figure does come included with, like we had seen with instances before, it does also come with the little hooked arms. Now the hooked arms is simply just a case of grabbing the arm from the existing socket and then replacing it with the arm that you want to use just like so wiggle that back into place wiggle 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 and instantly you've got yourself the little hooked hand and you can do that really on both sides if you want let me demonstrate for you take the hand out replace it with the hooked hand like so yeah be careful you don't pinch your finger i almost did that myself and you get the hooked hand not bad nice way probably display the figure like this because I think of my various T-1000s, I don't think many of them are displayed currently with the hooked hands. They'll probably just display it with this figure. I do want to talk about one thing about this particular figure. Let me go ahead and to do that, I'm, I guess I could really still keep talking about it. But let me just change the hands out for the time being. Pop that hand back into place. And we'll go ahead and pop the arm out. As I discussed, mentioned just previously, just a few seconds ago, how I have other Terminator T-1000 figures, uh, something that does, does pop into my mind that I want to talk about right now because I know I'm going to forget about it. The, uh, the option for figures for NECA toys when it comes to the T-1000 figures are plentiful. I mean, there's been a good handful of so uh, figures that have been released. For some strange reason, when it came to releasing... <laughs> I joke when I say this, the white hot T-1000. I don't know why I find such humor out of that. 
But when they opted to go with this figure, this specific figure that has the color changing option, they also gave him the same thing that a previous T-1000 had. That was the removable torso, which if you remember, you could replace it with a battle damage torso, which sounds good, but I don't really know why they would have used this torso for a figure that doesn't have that gimmick. I mean, you can take it off, but it doesn't really lend itself to the gimmick that this particular figure has. This figure has the gimmick of a light, a lighting up plastic via hot, via cold. Hot or cold hits the spot, or is it cold or hot hits the spot? Uh, either way, though, it does make sense that the torso would be separating like that. I mean, they really, I guess you could go in there and just glue it, put a couple of dollops of glue and put the torso back into place. But when you are moving the things on the figure, or even like just looking at the figure, if you just sit there and watch it, it seems to want to come away from itself. It's doing it right now. So I don't know why NECA would have opted, of all the options that they had available, I mean, color changing plastic I can't imagine would be different whether they would use halves or they would just use an entire top mold of the figure. Or if they wanted to use this for just the reasoning of why the color plastic has to work, why they just wouldn't glue the torso pieces together instead of us, you know, if you have the figure, you're always going to see, like it's again right there, the seams aren't keeping the torso together. As we push on and look further onto the figure, like I said, it's made of a translucent plastic, which via hot or cold methods, this will all change a lighter color. Don't worry, we'll have a look at that. I almost feel as if as I'm doing this, as I'm holding the figure, if I compared it, it's not that I have screenshots available of this, but it almost seems as if he's heating up and changing colors just from me holding the figure. Doesn't it seem as if he's actually getting a lighter shade of color? Well, we'll again dabble further into that. In the meantime, what we are getting is the same T-1000 figure that we had gotten before. Decent enough head sculpt right there. A lot certainly gets lost because you're using translucent plastic as the necessary means, but still, nonetheless, a nice looking head sculpt. Uh, obviously, you'll see white piercing white eyes. White does make some appearances, all right? It's not even quite white, it's more silver. Silver also finds its way into its badge, also into the little name tag, and the buttons in his shirt. The belt buckle also gets a little bit of that silver treatment. Um, the rest of the figure is just all this translucent blue plastic, which works in some ways, and in other ways it doesn't, because like seam lines where the, the things are connected together ultimately, and I guess the knees are the biggest one, the knees, you do see like this highlighted area around the knees, highlighted area around the feet, and again, like even around the boots. It like they they're glowing literally by comparison to the like the rest of the figure, hands and anything else that again has exposure. It's not going to consistently change the same color unless you submerge it in water. Even like as I'm holding the figure, like I said, it does seem like it's changing some lighter shade of color. So what we'll do is uh, I'm going to expose this to the elements and we'll see how much brighter <laughs> the white hot T-1000 actually gets. So some time has passed. I've had the T-1000 sitting in my freezer, probably to the surprise of anybody that's reaching in there for frozen food, finding a seven inch tall figure inside. Now the end result of getting the T-1000 out of the freezer, not only is it ice cold, uh, but it's also more of a jet black color. Leading then to the final conclusion that the heat would gradually make the figure, the Terminator here, lighter in color. Uh, cold seems to make it jet black, make it darker in color. I'm sure as well, the longer I hold it, you'll probably see that the gradual light, the heat of my hand, will start making this a, a cooler color once again. So as you guys are watching the rest of this review, just remember what color this guy was. This very, very dark, very dark bluish black, almost even closer to being black. We resume the rest of this review. Now this humbled reviewer holding this very ice cold figure in his hand. 
Talking a little bit more about the figure, you can already start seeing how the fingertips are now starting to turn a very light color once again. Uh, talking also a little bit about the figure, one problem I had with this figure initially when we looked at the T-1000 is sort of the same problem I have with this figure because they're really making use of the exact same mold. You can probably see it right off the bat, the problem that I'm facing. The torso I've always noticed to be longer up at the top here than the lower half. The lower half seems to be really short. Now it's not necessarily the problem of this specific figure. You can sort of already see how the fingers are, you know, the fingers are going really, really transparent, translucent blue. Uh, but I've always noticed like the legs are really short on the T-1000. I don't know what it is about it. I, maybe it's just me, but I find like the upper half of him uh, seems longer or the lower half seems too short. Again, this is still a problem that's facing this particular figure above all else, other than the fact of, again, the torso uh, comes loose way too often. Um, I guess what we could do is look through its posability because, I mean, really, as it stands for the figure, the gimmick of him translucent color changing from that lighter blue to the darker coloring um, will continue to work, will continue to do it as we look at the figure. I mean, even if you remember, you could almost even see through the torso when it was of a warmer temperature. And you'll probably see that again as we run through the figure's posability. So let's talk about the posability as I circle around the head of the T-1000. The head rotates all the way around. It hinges up and down and angles back and forth. The shoulders hinge out, no problems there whatsoever. Uh, when you are, however, moving the arms around the torso, they do tend to get a little stuck. I have also noticed too that moving the arms around starts separating again you can see right there, it starts separating the two halves from one another. So it's a shame that that's really the case. Uh, the waist does have uh, what looks to be a ball joint. You really can't move it up and down though, but you can certainly move it left to right. You wanna be careful though when you are rotating it left to right because the antenna of the walkie-talkie sticks quite far up. Something that it's a softer plastic, sure, but it's still going to be a problem where the figure, if you're turning it too abruptly, or if your finger's in the way, if you clip it, you can probably already see what would have happened if I wasn't too careful. So I kind of wish that that was shorter. I know it's fairly accurate to the movie, but still, it's a little too on the long side. The legs split out. They move forward. They move back. They bend at the knee. They also rotate back and forth. And then as we get down to the feet, the feet hinge up and down, they rotate back and forth, and you also have the ankle pivot. It is kind of neat though. I mean, I guess I could have easily submerged this guy in water, but really, again, the problem would have I would have come across when I would have had this guy in water, if I had done it just on the set, the backdrop here in which I normally shoot my videos, taking him out of water, I would have, I mean, this is a paper backdrop for anybody that didn't already know that. Taking him out of the, you know, taking him out of a dish of water and him dripping water, you probably would know what the end result would be, a damaged backdrop. So instead, I went the route of putting him in the freezer. And surprisingly, I was actually rather surprised to find the opposite ended up happening. I actually, for some strange reason, thought that the hot temperatures would have made him a darker color or kept him a darker color. And then the lighter colors, the, light, the cooler temperatures, would have made him ultimately a lighter colored figure. And actually, the reverse ended up being the case. You can still see, and we're watching it right now, I've got the heat of the lamps here kind of uh, tanning him from the top and tanning him from the side. As we're watching it, we're not going to obviously sit here for the next 15, 20 minutes, but you can see how the fingers, the fingertips, and the feet are already starting to turn a lighter color. What's interesting about this figure as well is that I think the original Kenner design had him more of browner colors, like tan colors. Instead, NECA decided to go with the color treatment, something that would be heat sensitive as the means to incorporate a gimmick. I personally think, and this is just my own honest opinion, for it being something that is controlled by temperature, where the coloring of the figure will drastically change depending on exposure to heat or expo exposure to cold, I would have just eliminated that gimmick altogether, and I would have just airbrushed him 
in whatever color that the original Kenner figure was based from and probably just eliminate this gimmick altogether. That's just my own personal opinion. I mean, take it with a grain of salt, as you would normally take any of my reviews with a grain of salt. I really think that they could have just limited and got rid of the uh, the gimmick altogether and instead just give a, given us a really cool airbrushed uh, look for the T-1000, something drastically different than the otherwise T-1000s that we already have in our collection. As the chill continues to escape this figure, you can see now where the heat patches are starting to warm through. The figure is now starting to revert back to its lighter shade of blue that we started with when we first had a look at this figure. You know, I think the reasoning why I thought the colors were going to be reversed is because I grew up with G.I. Joe's and Zartan exposing him to sun changed him a darker color than the original color of the plastic. Somehow with the T-1000, it's almost the reverse. The cold is what's changing him a darker color. As the T-1000 continues to get warmer and warmer, you can start seeing how he fills out in the blue. Again, it's a nice gimmick, but it's a gimmick that only works if you're exposing him to the elements on a regular basis. Sure, you can run him underneath cold water. You could put him out in the snow, because in Canada we certainly have enough snow to deal with right now, that that's an option as well. I think, I still think, I still think that gimmick-wise, I would have just eliminated it altogether and just airbrushed the figure. But I guess there's a novelty to be said. I don't always jump on board the novelty bandwagon, but I guess it's a novelty that I have to understand that there's people out there that would enjoy this. So I'm not going to rain on their parade by saying that, why, why couldn't we have just airbrushed the figure instead? I do admit it's a little cool no pun intended, to watch the figure right now warm up and that black coloring in the plastic starting to leave the figure. Okay, okay, it's not a bad gimmick after all. Some good news though, if you guys are interested in picking this one up as long, along with the other two figures that we had to look at from the new NECA Kenner lineup of Terminator 2 figures. Some good news is if you are interested in getting the white hot... <laughs> I still chuckle saying that. The White Hot T-1000 or any of the other two figures that we looked at. Some good news is you should be able to find them now at your local comic book store. The White Hot T-1000. So classic. Make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below, guys. Certainly more videos will be coming your way. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.